Imagination Technologies is a global leader in sort of semiconductor IP, so we design like the internals in chips, for example, in the smartphones, like your iPhone or, or, or like wireless routers, and then sort of our partners go on and take our designs, put them into chips, and we see them in all the products that we use. I, I work in the IMG Systems Group, and it's a, a really small team that focuses on taking our, our technologies from around the business and also working with partners to build sort of wireless connected systems and trying to make the process of making like connected systems at scale easier. I went to Cambridge University, it was it's basically it's the most amazing university on the planet. There's nothing really like it. It's magical, there's so much history, but also it's really at the cutting edge of what's like being developed and you know it's it's the only place I know where as a 20-year-old like student you can you know go off and build a solar powered car that costs half a million pounds and race it across the continent of Australia. You know, you can have an idea and get your friends together and make things happen really, really quickly. So Cambridge was amazing, but it's very academically difficult. It's really tough and it's even more difficult to get in in the first place. So when I was younger, I wanted to be either an astronaut or an airline pilot. You know, that was my sole focus. And then I had this, I had a couple, uh, two real people who really made a difference. And one of them was a guy called John MacArthur. He was this really eccentric guy and he thought that you know, he sold me on the idea of this renaissance man, that you could be an athlete, a scholar, a gentleman, and you know, you should go to Cambridge and just, just try. And then I also had a really inspirational teacher, Mr. Bridgman, who really, you know, he opened my eyes to engineering. He took us on tours of factories. He really, really encouraged us to at least see what engineering was and then, you know, apply to the best, really. I went on a few open days uh, and started seeing what, what people were working on, you know, people working on, like, aerodynamics of wings and and how you know we could do calculations and it could be true. And I remember like there was one lesson where we had a talk about momentum, you know, Newton's second law, you know, if a rocket throws mass out the back, the mass throws the rocket and it, it goes off. And you know, it all looked so simple. And then so we like a couple of my friends and I, you know, it was like, you know, do we even trust these mathematics? And we, we built our own rocket and we launched it. And you know, it really did it did work. You know, the rocket went up to seven hundred foot and came down on a parachute and it was just as we calculated and that was that was quite exciting. It's like actually I can have an idea and I can make it happen. And yeah, that's quite exciting. The, the, the fundamental thing is that, you know, the amount of resources we have on the earth are limited and uh, we have to do something about that. And so the World Solar Challenge is this really, really great challenge. It's a 3,000 kilometer solar marathon across the outback of Australia. And really it's putting all the brightest minds to try and work out, you know, what is the best way that we can solve the problem of mobility? You know, petrol will run out one day. And, and yeah, so that, it's a really great challenge. And I was involved as a team leader I'm from the Cambridge team. And then my role now is I'm an ambassador of the World Solar Challenge. I talk about the challenge and actually what it stands for and, and what the future might be. You know? and, and you know, the people today and all the young engineers today are the ones who are actually going to design the future of mobility. So I think the more of us who are aware of the issues, I think the more we can make a difference to it. It is very, very important. It is, it is critical to encourage the next generation because I think there are many reasons why people aren't applying to be engineers, even in electronics or any field, and it's mainly because people don't know what engineers do, or the people who have had experience have not, been, have not seen the exciting opportunities, the opportunities in, you know, to take stuff to scale or to work in Formula One, or all these kind of really amazing things. People don't really see that, and uh, often people don't know it's actually the engineers who make the technologies or build the systems that make these things happen. So I think the more we can show engineers, especially the young ones coming through, what, what is possible, I think the more of them will come of their own free will. Actually, it's a great career to be in. Like as a team, we built like the, um, uh, it's called the Creator CI40 IoT kit, and it's essentially an IoT development kit to help people understand the principles of building things at scale and to be able to practically deploy systems within hours rather than you know months or, or whenever. Um, but you know, there was a lot of teething issues, and the biggest problem was the usability wasn't very good. So my proudest achievement is uh, I built a little team together, and you know, we, 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 we built reference examples, we built libraries, a whole load of things just to really bring down that barrier so that you know, even people who didn't, weren't like at the peak of software engineering or electronics could still build systems. And yeah, I think that's the, the proudest bit because we took the average time for, de for developing a system from about two weeks to about two hours, and then we then took it from two hours to about an hour. So, yeah, and hopefully if we keep going. Never know; it might be in the order of minutes. You never really, you never really hear about engineers on TV. I mean, you know, if, if I want to be a lawyer, there's like, you know, there's a whole load of law stuff. If you want to be a policeman, there's loads of police dramas. If you want to be a doctor, you know, there's A and E, Holby City, da 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 da. But you don't really hear about, you know, engineers. And um, and many engineers, it's also it's also partly our fault. Many engineers don't talk about what we do. You know, we don't say. Actually, I worked on some really cool stuff today. We did da 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 Most engineers just kind of... You know, my granddad was an engineer, and I didn't even know he was an engineer until after I applied to do engineering. 
right? So that, that's, I think that's partly my fault for not asking, but it's also partly his fault for not sharing. And you know, we have to make sure that in our generation, we don't make the same mistakes.